Well, I got a special little thing today entitled in Christ alone. And I think everybody kind of knows this song. If you don't know what it is, you can pick up on it once we start singing it. But it tells us how our trust needs to be in Christ alone. The world out here is going to offer you all kinds of things to trust in. But truly, you've got to trust in Christ alone yes. in the direction that right. He leads and points you directly in your life. Listen to the words and worship with us as we sing in Christ alone. Yes.
So I'm hoping this morning that what the Lord's given me, I can relay and give to you and help you in one, uh, some way, shape, form, or fashion. So if you found your place in 1 Kings, or we have it on the screen, stand with me, please, out of respect to the reading of the Lord's Word. We'll, uh, we'll get into it and see what the Lord has fit for us this morning. Chapter 10, verse number 1, it says, And when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train, with camels that bear spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king which he told her not. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all of Solomon's wisdom, and the house that he had built, and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servant, servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, and his cupbearers, and his ascent, by which he went up into the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. And she said to the king, It was a true report that I had heard in my own land of the acts and of thy wisdom. Verse number 7 is where I took my title. It says, How be it? I believe not the words until I came. My eyes had not seen it. And behold, the half was not told to me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceeded the fame in which I heard. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you this morning for what you've done for us already. Lord, I thank you for that sweet spirit that I'm feeling in my soul. Lord, I pray that you just touch me from the bottom of my feet to the top of my head. Lord, just hide me behind the cross. Lord, I pray that you just use me now, Lord. Lord, just allow me to speak the words that you give me, Lord, not what I've studied, not what's on this piece of paper. Lord, I pray that you just continue to move, lead God direct, Lord. And most of all, Lord, if there's one here that doesn't know you as sick, Lord, I pray that today be that day. Lord, I pray that now is the accepted time. Lord, I pray that they start this year off right with knowing you, Lord, and just finding out, Lord, that truly the half hasn't been told of what they've been blessed with already, even as a sinner. Lord, you gave them that that breath that you give up this morning to come into this church house, Lord. You're still blessing them, Lord. I pray that you continue to touch. Lord, I pray that you just use me. Lord, give us a good rest this morning together. Lord, be with us tonight as we meet again. Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We sit here and we think about truly the half hasn't been told. And I sat here and I tried to figure out in my head how can I somehow explain to make it a, a point to where you can sit here and kind of relate with that statement of the half hasn't been told. So I started thinking about the love of God and the goodness of God far exceeds anything that man could ever imagine. Far exceeds anything that we can even grasp or think about. So I thought, here's the only way that I've found that I can try to relate to you just how good God is and how the half hasn't been told. When Columbus landed in America, Columbus had no clue that he had discovered a vast continent. He had no clue about its rivers, he had no clue about its lakes, he had no clue about its valleys. He didn't even know about the wealth that was in those mountains. He knew nothing about the gold, knew nothing about silver, he knew nothing about what he had truly discovered. So therefore it will take us, all of our days, to discover to even comprehend a bit of what the Lord has done for us. And a bit of his love and kindness for us. We shall need all of eternity to even kind of understand it. We can live till we're 100 years old and not even know or understand half of what the Lord's done to us. We can apply this also in a spiritual sense. We can think about when we come to the saving faith of Jesus and we truly know that joy of salvation. We can, then can proclaim also that the half hasn't been told. Because we were at one point in time we were alive physically, but we were not alive spiritually. 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. It says, All things pass away, behold, all things become new. So what I'm trying to describe to you, what I'm trying to explain to you this morning about the joy of salvation is the only I can describe is this. For someone that's not saved, that doesn't have a clue about the half of what's been told. They don't understand what I'm talking about. They don't understand why I'm up here crying like a baby during that song because I get it, because I understand. This is the only way I can explain it to you. When we realize that cost of redemption, we see what he's done for us. We see all that splendor of heaven. Then we will begin to understand. But we see here also, we describe, we, we describe it like this. It's like describing a beautiful sunset to somebody that's blind that cannot see it. It's like describing a beautiful choir song to somebody that's deaf that cannot hear it. It's like describing just something to that effect. Like you, you, you can't even imagine the glory of what God is going to give us and what, what we see when we get there. But when a Christian... When, excuse me. When a Christian preaches glory, and we get in front of our Lord and Savior Jesus, then we're going to know for sure what it's all about. We're going to know that. 
that the half hasn't been told. Because we're going to see what he's done for us this morning. When I sat there and got the song list for last night, I sat there, I told Brother Tony this morning, I said, Woo, hey, that's God. Hey, man, you sit there and go, what do you mean? I didn't even read all the verses of these songs until this morning when we sang it. When we all get to heaven, we sit here and read verse number three. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory. Yes, sir. Then all the toils of life repay. Yeah. Just that glimpse of glory in him when we get there. We're going to know what it's like. We're going to understand the half that hasn't been told. We're going to understand what he's all done for us. So first thing I'm going to see this morning, I want to read this first narrative here. Talk about Solomon this morning. So, chapter 10, verse 23 and 24 says, So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. And all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. Mm -hmm. Those two words right there is why I'm going to focus, why I want you to understand this morning. Which God has put in his heart. So this morning, I'm not here to talk about Solomon. I'm not here to talk about all of his wisdom and all of his riches and all of his, his stuff that he had as a king. I'm not here to talk about that this morning. I'm here to talk about the one that has more than him this morning. I'm here to talk about the one that gives him that wisdom this morning. I'm here to talk about the one that sits on high, that is ready, waiting for us to come meet him when God the Father says, Hey, go get your children. Go get your bride. So this morning, when I sit here and I think about the half has it been told, I'm thinking about the half of what Jesus has done for us this morning. So this morning, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to take a little bit off of what we read out of here about Solomon. But I'm going to compare it and put it further into the eyes, into the eyes and into the process of what Jesus has done for us this morning. So, first off, we heard of his wealth. We read about his wealth in here. So we'll see verse number 7. It says, How be it, I believe not the words, until I came and my eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and thy prosperity exceeded the fame in which I, were, which I heard. So again, we're not here to worship Solomon, but I'm here to lift up my King Jesus. Because yeah. there is nobody like him in his wealth this morning. There's nobody like him in his wealth. We say, well, Brother Dusty, what do you mean in his wealth? I'm going to give you three points right here. His wealth in the, the, in the physical, his wealth in the material, and his wealth in the spiritual. All the three which we can relate to this morning. So Philippians 4.19, Brother Kevin said it last week. But my God. Yes. I highlighted that right there. But my God, not a little G God, I'm talking a capital G God this morning. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. So we think about the physical. We've seen the Lord answer prayers before. We've seen people be you know, praying, Lord, hey, I've got a cancer scare. I've got that dreaded C word that the, that the doctors gave me. Can you please pray for me? Can you please pray? And we've sat here and we've prayed for these people. We've prayed and we've seen the Lord answer those prayers. The doctors may come in and go, hey, I don't know what happened. I don't know where it went. I don't know what happened. Your body may have just absorbed it. No, that ain't what happened. Huh? Yeah. My God, the great physician, is the one who came and answered those prayers. And he led God directly. He's heard Amen. the petitions that we put onto his ear. When we think about all those that we've been praying for. I've got a guy I work with that has been having some heart issues. And he told me a little bit about it. He said, just pray for him. I'll pray for him. I've been praying for him. I'm waiting to hear what's happening. We've been praying for others that had different tests and different things going on. And the Lord's come through and answered prayers. We've heard the good news of those things that are going on. So we see that, you know, when we plead that, Lord, please help them. Please please answer these, these prayers. Please heal them of this stuff. We plead the blood of Jesus on them to just heal them and restore them back to health. We know that God can answer the physical. So then we think about the material. We think about some of these things, you know, that we... Well, this is, I guess, still in the physical. We'll, 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 we'll drop back a point here. We know that sometimes we may face situations that seem like we may not see the end. Yeah, right. We face some of these situations right. where the Lord, you know, we've had these different things come onto our minds and into our hearts, and we just can't find a way out. We're just sitting here going, Lord, why are we going through this? Why do we need, Lord, I need some peace to get through this point, to get through this, this season, through this test, through this trial. We see here, we know that Philippians 4, verse, chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 says, Be careful for nothing. Right. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God which path passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We sit here and we think about, oh, well, the world offers all kinds of peace. And they say, peace, can you can get through this. And peace, you can get through that. But that ain't the type of peace that my Jesus gives. Yeah. That ain't the type of peace that my Lord and Savior can touch you and give you the peace that passes all understanding this morning. I shared this little picture on Facebook the other day. I'm going to share it again right here. It says, when everything is shaking, God is up to something. Yeah. It's so easy to forget that God can use even the most hurtful, 
hopeless situation to show his love and his faithfulness to us. So today, be reminded that in your pain, God is doing something. You might not understand it now, but continue to trust in him, to obey his will, and to worship him. God wouldn't allow anything unless it has a purpose. He wouldn't allow anything unless it has a purpose. So we see this morning that during these times of struggles, during these times of hardship, we must draw nigh to him. The Bible says that he will draw nigh to us. There's an old song that talks about we are safe thus far. He's brought us safe thus far. And I want to look right here in Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 14. And I'm going to explain to you what I mean by safe thus far. We sit here and read chapter 2. Let's go ahead and go up to verse number 13. And Ephesians 2, verse 13 says, But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. For he is our peace when we're struggling through times that we don't see our way through. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down that middle wall of partition between us. I studied that verse a little bit, Brother Edward, and I got to look and I saw a lot of people say right there where it says, For he is our peace who has made both one. Meaning that when he died on that cross for us, he took that, that wall of partition that says right here and hath broken it down, the middle wall of partition between us. A lot of people say that's between the Jew and the Greek, Jew and the Gentile, that he made that difference. He made that difference. Well, I got to study a little bit more. I said, well, my brain instantly went back to, hey, when he died on that cross and he gave up the ghost and said, it is finished, yeah. that veil was torn between us. Uh, you say, well, hey, what is that? What is that veil? I'll tell you what that veil represented. That represented that I have access straight to the Holy yeah. of Holies. Yeah. I have access to go straight to the Father and pray, hey, Lord, I need your peace. Right. Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need you to help calm my nerves, calm my fears. That's what that access had. That's when it says, hey, he broke down that middle wall between us. I could help you that. When I saw that, I said, hey, hallelujah, he broke down that wall that separated so now I don't have to go to a man. I don't have to say, hey, can you take this to the Father? Can you pray for this for me? Can you sacrifice? He made that sacrifice for me. He gave this life for me. So I can go boldly to that throne of grace and say, hey, I've made it safe thus far. I just came from the throne room this morning and I can testify and say, hey, that wall is separated because God gave this life for us. He gave that sacrifice for us this morning. So then we see and we move on that material. We talk about the material aspect of how We've heard of his wealth. I know a lot of you have probably been through the same situation as me. You sit there and you've got more bills on paper than you've got money coming in. You sit there and go, Lord help. Yes, sir. How am I going to get through this? You know, your money's done got funny. You're sitting there going, what in the world's going on? I want to remind somebody this this morning. Psalm chapter 50, verse 10. Yes, sir. 12 says, For every beast of the forest is mine, mm. the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the fields are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine and the fullness thereof. Amen. That's what my God owns this morning. All Amen. is mine, is what yes. he says. He owns it all. If he can take his hand and cup out the oceans and say, hey, hey, I want an ocean right there with his hand. And we know the vastness of our oceans this morning. He can take that hand and cup out the ocean this morning. And he can take the span, which is between the finger, and say, yep, that looks good right there for the whole universe. That looks good for the, for the atmosphere. That looks good. That's what I want to be right there. We know that we serve a mighty God that can take his hand. And if he can cup out the oceans in it and says he's got the whole world in his hand, yeah. honey, then you in his hand also. You know, you may not see the way out. You may not see how you're going to get through, but you're in his hand. You can't fall off of his hand if you're in the palm of his hand this morning. He's there for you. He's got you. The whole world is in his hand this morning. So we sit here and we think, okay, well, you, you know, but, but, but I still just don't understand. How's he going to meet my need? How's he going to supply whatever? But as my Bible says, but my God shall supply all yes, of your need according yes, to his riches and glory. Amen. That's how we can step forward and we can say, hey, we know that the Lord's already got that building as good as there. Because why? Because we've already seen it happen. We know the Lord's going to answer. And we know the Lord's going to provide way for us. So we can testify and already give him praise on credit saying, thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do yeah, back yeah, here yeah, in that building. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm sitting here thinking in my head right now. Thank you, Lord, for the lives that are going to be saved in that building. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. Thank you for the baptisms we're going to have. Thank you for the lives that are going to be changed. Thank you for the marriages that are going to be restored. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do for us this morning. I can't help but just sit here and give him praise this morning and thank him for what he's done. Because why? The half hasn't been told me of what he's done for me. The half hasn't been told of how good he is. The half hasn't been told of how he's going to provide in my future. The half hasn't been told about how good he truly is this morning. And I pray if I could get a few people just to get excited like I would go to our bus down the scenes. We'd have a revival for days 
Can I just go ahead and tell you this right here, that the sin that you may think you're getting away with this morning, the sin that may be a quote-unquote hidden sin that only you know about, it's beginning to eat away at the inside. It's beginning to build up. It's beginning to, to compound. And so therefore, sooner or later, you know, first, I don't know if this is for you, but I'm telling you right now, sooner or later, be sure your sins will find you out. Just the same as leprosy began to show its way outside, the sin will do that same thing. The sin will do the same thing, and you're going to realize it's going to start to cost you something. It's going to start to cost you something. But notice what that verse says. It says right here that the leopards are, leopards are cleansed, the unclean are healed, and those that were separated from the love of the Father have not, from not having a clean heart are now made clean. By what? By that precious blood of Jesus. Amen. I'm thankful this morning that finally once I got a hold of what the Lord was trying to tell me, I knew that, hey, I can call on His name. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah 33, 3, Call upon me and I'll answer thee and show thee great and mighty things right. which y'all know it's not. I'm glad that I can turn around and testify that, hey, when I finally said, Lord, I know I'm a sinner and I know I'm in need of a Savior, that He came to where I was. He came and lifted me up. Set my feet on that rock and established my goals. Why? Because He loves me. Because He died for me. That's what he did this morning. That's why I'm thankful that, hey, I know that when I get to heaven, I'm going to be able to just to shout glory because, hey, the half hasn't been told of what he saved me from so far throughout my life. I'm thankful for my Lord and Savior this morning. Thankful for what he's done for us. So we see that we said there that we covered his works. We covered his works. That last part of that verse sat there and told us and the poor have a gospel preached to them. I've already said it, but I'm going to say it again. People still need the gospel preached. Right. They still need the gospel preached. Amen. You may be saying, hey, Amen. but I'm not a preacher. I'm not a preacher. I, I, I'm not supposed to preach. That's okay. If you're saved this morning, you have a testimony. Right. Right. You have a testimony. You can tell somebody of where you once were and of where you are now. You say, well, I don't like going back and telling people of who I was. I don't like going back and talking about where I was or whatever. Can I tell you something? Your testimony of where you were to where you are now may help somebody that may be where you was and they need to be where you are now. Does that make sense? Are we all on the same page here? What I'm getting at is, hey, look, look. let's look at this right here. I, I'm going to explain it. i got Bible to back this up. I've got Bible. Here, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9 through 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Listen to this verse right here. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. That's how we can go back and tell people what we was. Because why? We used to be what this Bible verse says. But then it says right here in verse 11, And such were some of you. But then it goes on and says, But ye are washed. But ye are sanctified. But ye are justified. Just as if I had never sinned. That's what my Jesus did for me this morning. He took away what I was and made me who I am now. I'm a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. There's nobody like him in his works this morning. I'm here to tell you. I'm here to remind you. You're going to hear this a lot during this message. The half hasn't been told of what he's done for you this morning. The half hasn't been told of what he's done. So we've heard of his wisdom. Number three. We've heard of his wisdom. Verse number 10, or chapter 10, verse 1 through 3 says, And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a great train, with camels and fair spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him and all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king, which he told her not. So we've heard of his wisdom. So I got this. She, the queen came in that verse right there. She it says right here, verse uh, chapter 10, verse 1, she came to prove him. She came to test him. She came to try him and see if she could catch him in a fault. See if she could catch him in a mess up. She tried her hardest to come and just, hey, are you, are you really what you say you are? That's pretty much what this king did. She traveled a long way to try to just prove him wrong, to try to test him, see if it truly was what, it, what he said it was. How many of you can testify and relate to this? That old sorry devil will come and try to test you. He'll try to come and put you in different situations and different trials and different tests and different things that are going on to where you're trying to, the devil's testing you during different things. The devil's trying to create problems. I'm here to tell you, he's the one that has all the answers to those problems. He's the one that has all the, the questions.
questions that you need answered. You go to him and take those questions to him. So she came to prove him and to test him. So here's what I'm trying to, the point I'm trying to get across right here. This is the first Sunday of the new year. 2023 is behind us. Thank goodness. 2024 is in front of us. So here's what I want you to remember. <laughs> hey, young boy, that, this is, y'all bear with me. Little rabbit trip. Hey, young boy, over in youth group years ago, when I first started teaching youth group over there, he says, Mr. Dusty, says, you know what the purpose of a windshield is? I said, yep. Yeah. He said, what is it? He said, to look out where you're going and look forward. He says, all right, I'll take that. He goes, Mr. Dusty, you know what the purpose of a rearview mirror is? I said, to check behind you. He said, yep. Yeah. He goes, so why is the windshield so much bigger than the rearview mirror? I said, well, you tell me. Because you ain't supposed to keep looking backwards. You're supposed right. to keep looking hey, forward. Right. You're supposed to keep looking forward. <laughs> 2023 is behind us. Man. Those tests that we faced in 23, where we said we felt the fire. We felt the problems. We felt that issue. Oh. We felt like those three Hebrew boys getting chucked into the fire. We know what that feels like. We know that in 23 we face those storms. We face those tests. We face those trials. We know that, you know, in the middle of it all, we finally found out that there was Jesus. But, hey, we still struggle. Through 2023. We still sit there and we may think about it. Why did we have such a hard 2023? Why was all this stuff going on? But then we sit there and we think back to our Ebenezer. We think back to where hitherto the Lord has helped us. We feel like, hey, we've made it through 2023. Well, now we're into 2024. I'm here to tell somebody, hey, let your 2023 be in the past. And let your 2024 keep on moving forward. Because the best is yet to come. Why? Because we don't know the half of what the Lord's got in store for us in 2024. We don't know the half of what he's got situated that he's going to provide for you in your life. He's going to take the problems of 23, give you the peace in 24, and you can keep on heading the way that the Lord wants you to go this morning. Because why? Because the half of what he's done and the half of what he's going to do has yet been told you this morning. We sit there and we think about there's nobody like him in his wisdom. He's got all the answers to our problems. He knows everything that we're going to face. He knows what he's going to do for us during that time. You sit there and go, okay, well, hey, give me, a, give me another verse, preacher. Give me another verse. I'm going to give you another verse. This verse baffled me to no end. And I sat there and I just praised him when I first heard this verse years ago. John 21, 25. Says, and there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. amen. That's what that verse ends with. Amen. And to that I give an amen because, hey, we've got what we need right here on paper that we can follow and understand what God's done for us. We know that He's provided the sacrificial lamb, the one that makes the difference, that shed His blood for us. We know that He can help us. He knows that we know that we can get that salvation through Him. That everything else that's not written in this book, the world itself could not contain. We're going to find out when we get there what He's done for us. We're going to find out when we reach glory. What a day that'll be, honey, when my Jesus, I shall see. When I look upon His face, oh, I can't help but shout glory and praise Him for everything that He's done. When you look upon His face, the one that saved me by His grace, when He takes me by the hand, I have faith will be told when He takes me by the hand. He takes me by the hand and leads me through that promised land. What a day, a glorious day that'll be this morning. What a day, a glorious day that'll be. Lastly, number four. We've heard of his worship. We've heard of his worship. We say, well, preacher, where in the world do you hear anything about worship in these verses? Look with me at verse number, we'll just jump down to verse number five. And the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servant, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, and his cupbearers, and by his ascent, by which he went up unto the house of the Lord. He went up into the house of the Lord. Right. Solomon didn't do nothing different when that queen came looking to try to prove him and ask him questions. There was no difference in his normal routine. Every day he did exactly what, what was listed right here. He made it a point to go up into the house of the Lord. You say, well, what do you think he did the house of the Lord? He worshipped. Right. He gave sacrifice. Good. He gave himself. He made it a point to go up to see, you know, to, to the house of the Lord. So, let, let me give you a couple definitions. Praise. You know, we, we hear stuff all the time about praise and worship music. <coughs> you know, I, I like listening to praise and worship music. 
Have we ever truly thought and, and, and read into what the definition of praise and worship is? Oh, my God. Praise. It goes on like this. It said it's a joyful remembrance of all that God has done for us. And it is intertwined with thanksgiving. As we give back to God appreciation for his works on our behalf. Yeah. That's what praise is. We give God praise. The Bible tells us praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to the excellence of His greatness. Praise Him with the psaltery heart. Praise Him with the temple and dance. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. That's what the Bible tells us talking on praise this morning. We sit here and we say, okay, well now let's go into worship. Worship comes from a different place within our spirit. Worship should be reserved for God and God alone. Praise can be a part of worship, but worship goes beyond praise. Praise is easy. Worship sometimes may not. Now I sit there and you go, well, what do you mean worship's not easy? Job chapter 1 verse 21. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Throughout whatever we face, any hardships, any tests, any trials, God is worthy of our praise and of our worship. He's worthy of that worship. To truly worship, we must let go of self. And be willing to humble ourselves before God. And surrender every part of our lives to His control. How hard is that sometimes to surrender every part of our life? To truly worship, that's what it tells us. Surrender every part of our life to His control. It's then in that true worship that we invite the Holy Spirit to speak to us. To convict us and to comfort us. I'm thankful this morning that the Holy Spirit is my comfort. Amen. I'm thankful that when I face those hard times that I can go to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I need your help. Holy Spirit, I need your grace through this. Holy Spirit, I need your peace. And he comes along and he just scoops us up. Brother Edward, I, <laughs> I love that time that I'll sit there and just be praying, Lord, I need some help. Lord, I need some, I need you to give me some peace through this. Lord, I need your help while I struggle at work. And I just get those, I get them like that. The Holy Ghost gives me so I just feel that, that hug come in. I feel that presence of the Holy Spirit. That's where we can truly worship and say, thank you, Jesus, Amen. for what you've done for Amen. us this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for that Holy Spirit hug. Thank you for your presence being made known this morning. So I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. You don't have to worship like I do. You don't have to praise like I do. I'm not telling you nothing about how you should or shouldn't worship. What I am telling you, yep. Come on. I'm back in my praise and worship. Right. Like this Bible says. Right. My Bible tells me to let everything I have praise, praise the Lord. My Bible is telling me to worship then, honey, I'm going to praise and I'm going to worship. If right. you don't see fit to do it, that's fine. If you don't agree with it, then you've got a problem with the Lord. Amen. Because I follow what the Bible says and praise the way the Lord wants me to praise <laughs> this morning. Amen. So we sit here and we notice that famous song back there on verse number 1. Chapter number, chapter 10, verse number 1. She came concerning the name of the Lord. I truly think that that's the reason she came because she wanted to see what Solomon's God was really all about. She was coming concerning the name of the Lord this morning. So what impressed her more than his position, more than his power, more than his prosperity, more than his prestige was his relationship with God. When she learned that Solomon's God was the one responsible for his glory, she was interested and wanted to know more. She wanted to know more of what God had done for him. So this morning, if Solomon's worship, Solomon's relationship with Jesus was enough to bring a queen from some 1,500 miles off, how's your relationship with Jesus this morning? How's your worship and praise with him this morning? Can you testify that the half hasn't been told? Can you shout it out and say, hey, I know that I serve a good Jesus. I know that he's provided for me. You know, that's the testimony that we should have. That's what we should be able to proclaim to reach those lost sinners. Say, hey, I know that my Jesus has done more for me than what I truly know. I know that the half hasn't been told of what he's truly done. That's what we need to proclaim this morning. That's why the gospel still needs to be preached. We sat there and talked about that the other morning, about what the gospel meant. It's the good news. I'm proclaiming the good news this morning. We ain't going to find no good news on Fox or on CNN or on Facebook or on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, whatever. You're not going to find no good news right there. But when we open up this Bible and we see what God has for us and we preach the word and you share the word, it don't matter if you only share one verse with somebody. You're giving them the good news this morning. And that's what people still need to hear in this day and hour. They need to hear about the good news. But what I'm trying to finish out, this last little bit, Mr. Cole, if you'll get that video ready, I'm about done. I don't know what you've grown up here this morning. I don't know what you've been told. But I'm going to tell you this morning again that Jesus died for your sins. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I'm here to tell you too that, hey, even if you're not saved, you don't know Jesus as your Savior. 
He's still blessing you this morning. Amen. He's still giving you unbeknownst blessings to you. Right now, if you're not saved this morning, you're getting the most heaven that you'll ever get. On this earth, you're getting the most heaven you'll ever get because you truly will not understand how good you had it here. When you end up in hell, if something happens and you don't choose Jesus as your Savior. But I'm here to tell you that half hasn't been told of what He's truly done for you this morning. That spirit that we're feeling today doesn't compare or come close to that what we'll experience in heaven. Right. It doesn't compare to how good it's truly going to be. We sit there and, boy, I got all excited while I go and it had me a little spell thinking about how good God truly is and how the half hasn't been told. My body can't take any more than what I just had right there. If I was to have a Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost spell the way we're going to have in heaven, honey, I'd have been dead right here because I can't contain the goodness of what God gives me. I can't contain of how He's truly stepped up and, and helped me and handed me all the blessings in my life that I didn't deserve. He's more than we can ever imagine this morning. He's more precious than silver and gold, like that song said. He's everything to me. And He's the only one, listen to me now, He's the only one that can satisfy your longing soul. If you're not saved this morning and you're yearning for things to try to fill that empty void, I'm here to tell you there's nothing that's going to fill that void but Jesus and Him alone. You've got a Jesus-sized hole in your heart that this world tries to fill. But what the world tries to put in there will never fill that hole. That's only hell for Jesus and for Him alone. So if that's you this morning you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I'm going to ask you this morning, would you come forward let us show you what the Bible says? Brother Kevin will be here. I'll be up here. We'll show you what the Bible says and let you know what this Bible says for us this morning. And truly, then you'll understand. Hey, when I get to heaven, I'm not going to know the half. The half has not been told. That's what that queen told Solomon. She says, How be it, I believe not the words until I came. My eyes had, had my eye, my eyes had seen it, and behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceeded the fame in which I heard. I think I just pray this morning that if that's you, you don't know the half of it. You don't know what Jesus has truly done for you. Come this morning, let us show you. Christian, if you're here this morning and you, you sit there and say, well, preacher, you, you really put this out there. You really put it out there in a way that, you know, it really made me realize, hey, I really don't understand or I really haven't given him praise of the half of how good he's been to me. You can sit there and say, thank you, Jesus, where you're at, or you can come and tell him on this altar. I prayed last week when I come down, Lord, give me the message that you have me to give me. If this be this one, Lord, just allow me to preach it the way that you see fit. Because I'm truly excited and thankful for that that hasn't been told this morning. I'm thankful for what he's done. As we stand, i got one little quote that I'm going to read. As everybody stands, we'll close the prayer. We'll read this quote. I'll read this quote. It says, The story of grace, an old story. Apostles preached it with a rattle of chain. Martyrs declared it with arm of fire. Deathbeds have affirmed it with visitors or with visions of glory. And ministers of religion have sounded it through the lanes and highways and in the chapels and in the cathedrals. It has been cut into stone with chisel and spread on the canvas with pencil. And it has been recited in the doxology of great congregations. And yet when a man first comes to look upon the palace of God's mercy and to see the royalty of Christ and the wealth of his banquet and the luxuriance of his attendance and the loveliness of his face and the joy of his service, he exclaims with prayers, with tears, with songs, and with triumph, the half, the half was not told me. Lord, I thank you this morning for what you've done. Lord, I thank you for giving me the strength to preach, Lord. I thank you for making preaching easy. Lord, I pray, Lord, now during this invitation time, Lord, if there's one that needs to make uh, make do with you, Lord, just needs to get their lives right, Lord, that it be the day. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you just continue to move. Lord, I pray that you touch during this invitation time. Lord, I pray that you just continue to use this message. Lord, thank you for the half that hasn't been told. Lord, we thank you for what you've done for us. Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do and that you're going to continue to do. Lord, we're just going to continue to give you honor and glory and praise. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. As this song plays. <laughs> Yeah. 
area of your life you need to speak Jesus over this morning. Every dark condition starts to burn. Burden, problem. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak to Jesus. Power in that name.
song that says Jesus, there's just something about that name. I'm here to tell you there's power in that name this morning. I'm I'm a walking example of one of those times. I'm not trying to make this about me, but I remember a time when I got that same scare and had to come down here and, and people prayed over me and God touched my body and healed me of something that, that the, that's supposed to be unhealable. God can do that. Jesus can do that for you this morning. Listen, He not only can help you in your physical health, but your spiritual health. Some of you so so sin sick this morning, you don't even know what to do. And you just got to get it to Him this morning. Amen. I thank God for the message this morning. Thank you, Brother Dusty, for, pre- for uh, preaching that. I thought about this as he was preaching. The Bible says he preached on the half has not been told. Second Corinthians chapter 2 says this, But it, as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of men the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Amen. Y'all know God's got something prepared for y'all this, this year, this week, this day. God's got something prepared for you. Some of y'all are, are struggling with things that you lost last year. Right. But the only reason you lost those things last year is because God's got something prepared for you this year. Amen. Amen. And listen, just look forward to that. I want to encourage you with that heart. That, that the half has not been told. No, I can't wait for it to spend uh, eternity in heaven here and the rest of the story. As, uh, as Paul Harvey would say, that's the rest of the story. Amen. Yeah, we'll get to hear it all through eternity up there. So I pray, if you don't know Jesus, listen, time is, is coming down to, to, to a close. I believe the Lord could be back at any moment. Amen. You need to get it right with God. If you, you, you want to leave this place today and say, I, I can't leave before I get saved, you, you grab me or Brother Dusty after church and We'll lead you. You ain't got to do it in an invitation, an altar. Just whenever the Lord puts upon your heart, you need to respond. If you're here today and you're visiting with us, thank you so much for visiting. We appreciate you coming. Please come back and be with us again. We have service tonight at 6.30. Choir practice at 5.30. Remember, choir, please be here on time so we can get started. Uh, and then Brother Trey will be preaching tonight. Pray for him. Lift him up in prayers this day. And uh, then we'll have a conference after church tonight uh, to, to give updates on our building projects. So be much involved in all that. Don't forget, Wednesday night, we'll again, back uh, at full schedule again. We've got youth. Uh, if you've got a child that you want to get involved on Wednesday night, we need to start at 7 p.m. We've got ages all the way from nursery up to uh, senior adults. All and every age in between. There's somewhere for you to fit in. And then we'll have a meal at 8 o'clock, so come out and be a part of that. And come back next week be with us. Excited about what God's going to do in the month of January. The Lord's put on my heart to preach a series of events, or a series of, of things that take place in the Bible in the end times. And we're going to begin to start, and we're going to preach on the rapture next Sunday. So if you, you're interested in end time things and what... What's the timeline and how God's going to work this thing out? Well, listen, we already have the end of the story written right. in the book, right. 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 We can tell you how right. it's going to go uh, and, and, and let you be prepared. So we're going to begin to do that. We're going to preach a few weeks on those topics. So you come out next week if that interests you at all. If you know somebody that's interested in that, you come out and be a part of that. Anything else? Hey, if the youth need any tickets to be sold for Valentine's Day dinner, please see us hand in the day so you can get those. Brother Dustin, come on to the back. Valentine's Day dinner, see a young person to buy one of those. A young person, if you need some, see Miss Dana. Men, if you want to be involved in the in the uh, men's fellowship, January the 27th, please sign up back here on the back. Um, it's, there's a sign up sheet here. Just write your name down. We need to know how many that will be there. And, uh, and uh, if nothing else, don't forget ties and offering plates in the back. There's Envelopes up under if you'd like to get to the building fund. Mission plate on top. Please don't forget about our mission fund. We're not going to stop ministering and doing the things that we've done to get us where we're at just because we're building the building. So missions plate is here. Please give to that and be a great blessing to everybody involved. No other word announcement will be dismissed. And a word of prayer, Brother Dennis Womack, will you dismiss us?